Hello guys, Mr. Fluffy Fancy, and today guys another video, today guys I'm reviewing the Mandalorian Season 2 finale, which is Episode 8, The Rescue, which this review will contain spoilers, because uh, if you haven't seen, trust me, you definitely want to go see it without being spoiled, but um, if you just don't care, I guess you continue watching, but uh, pretty much this episode, uh, you know, is the grand finale of, you know, what's been building up all season, especially last episode. You know, where Moff Gideon's got, you know, Grogu now, and, uh, you know, they have to do a rescue mission. But this episode, uh, you know, Mando uh, picks up Bo-Katan and, uh, I forgot Saucer Banks' character's name, but, uh, you know, those two Mandalorians. And, uh, you know, Bo-Katan's pretty much like, well, yeah, I'll help you, but uh, you gotta let me fight Moff Gideon and get the Darksaber back. He's like, okay, yeah, you can have whatever you want, I just want the kid back. And then, you know, they all go off on this rescue mission. First of all, they, like, uh... They uh, commandeer this uh, this Imperial uh, shuttle, you know, just like from the original trilogy that has Dr. Pershing on it. So, you know, they take him as prisoner. Um, nice little exchange. Uh, how one of the pilots, you know, like turns on Pershing, how, like holds him hostage or whatnot. But, um, you know, some nice little dialogue back and forth between, you know, I was on the Death Star, you know, um, Cara Dune's like, which one, uh, you know, a nice little sick burn, but, uh, you know, they commandeer that, and, uh, then they're gonna stage this, uh, kind of, um, attack on the shuttle, you know, where, uh, in the Imperial shuttle, you got, uh, you know, the Mandalorian boat, or, uh, Bo-Katan, uh, the other Mandalorian, uh, uh, Fennec, and, uh, uh, Cara Dune and uh, Boba Fett's gonna be chasing them in the Slave One to kind of stage like a uh, attack so they can have like a you know emergency landing onto Mafia and Star Cruiser. Which let me just say it was so awesome seeing how uh, you know the Tie Fighters are deployed because I've always kind of wondered that, but I don't know that was just so awesome seeing that. But um, you know they crash land and they just start tearing through troops like. Uh, you know, all the way till they get to the main, or the main bridge or whatnot, and they get there, like, where's Moff Gideon at, and, you know, um, Mando's kind of off on his own little thing, and both that, I don't know, he went off somewhere, but, um, Mando's kind of on his own little thing, he has to stop the dark troopers, uh, you know, one almost completely, you know, just, you know, kills him pretty much, uh, just one by themselves, he's able to lock the other ones into their little, uh, their little, uh, their little frigate kind of thing, I don't know what it's called, but, um, and then he's, a, for some reason, there's a, uh, uh, vacuum door into space right there, like, in the room where they keep the dark troopers for some reason, but, you know, he sucks them out in space, and then, uh, he goes to Grogu's holding cell where Moff Gideon's, uh, you know, holding the dark saber over him, and, um, Moff Gideon's just so evil and conniving, like, holy crap, like, okay, so first of all, he, like, tricks Mando, he's like, uh, you know, he's talking about her, about Bo-Katan, and Mando's like, listen, you can keep that, all I want's the kid, and he's like, you know, I see you have a strong connection with him, so I'm just going, I already got what I want, you can go and take him, and when Mando goes in to grab uh, Grogu, you know, um, uh, Moff Gideon just starts attacking him with a dark saber, and, you know, we get a nice little battle between, you know, Mando uh, with his best car staff, and, uh, you know, Moff Gideon with the dark saber, I wish it went on a little bit longer, but it was pretty cool, but Moff Gideon was setting, you know, like, Moff Gideon knew exactly what he's doing, because he knew that, you know, to be the rightful wielder of the Dark Server, you gotta uh, win it in combat, which I didn't even know that, but, uh, of course, Mando didn't know that either, but uh, he defeats Moff Gideon, puts him in handcuffs, and brings him and Grogu to the bridge, and Moff Gideon knew exactly what he was setting up, because he knew Bo-Katan wanted to be the, you know, rightful heir, or, I mean, ruler of Mandalore, uh, you know, Mando walks in with the kid, Moff Gideon, and the Dark Saber in. Uh, you could just see the look on Bo Katan's face, and you're kind of like, uh, I mean, she can just have the Dark Saber, right? And then, you know, Moff Gideon just kind of starts laying into it, like, well, now, you know, she has to fight you for it. And Mando's like, no, just take it. And, she's, and he's like, yeah, that's not how that works, but whatever. So I guess now Mando's the official ruler of Mandalore. Uh, kind of interesting there, but, um, and then they start getting, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, like, bridge, like, I guess, like, the hangar bay, whatever it's called, starts getting, uh, you know, like, uh, dark troopers start coming back into the ship, and then they start making their way to the front bridge, they lock the blast doors, uh, but, you know, all the dark troopers are lined up and, like, punching through the door or whatnot, and then, oh my god, and then you see an, a single X-Wing flying, you're like, okay, the Republic's here to save the day, and no, it's just like an X-Wing, and uh, even the character's like, what? what's a single X-Wing gonna do, it's here to save the day, I guess, or whatnot, but, and then as soon as uh, they said that, I was like, 
oh crap, it's Luke, ain't it? And then, uh, sure enough, you know, you see a black cloak figure with a green lightsaber just start tearing through dark troopers, and, ah, oh, it was so awesome, like, uh, he literally tears through every single dark trooper, like, it was just so awesome, but... Um, and I was like, I can't believe either this is going to be Luke or, you know, it's not going to be. Because I was like, I highly doubt they'll have the balls to have it be Luke Skywalker and show his face and whatnot. But sure enough, when he gets up to the bridge, man, there's like, unlock the door. And they're like, uh, no, did you see what you just did? There's Dark Trooper. And he's like, unlock the door. And, you know, Grogu's kind of, I guess, uh, talking to him telepathically or whatnot. But open up Blaster, you know, Luke comes in, takes off his hood, just straight up. Like, I didn't think they had the balls to show his face or whatnot, but, uh, they sure did, and, uh, uh, he's like, uh, yeah, I'm here to, you know, train the child or whatnot, and, uh, Amanda's like, well, I don't think he wants to go with you, and Luke's like, uh, no, he's, want, he wants your permission, which, you know, is just so sweet, and he's like, I see you two have a strong connection or whatnot, so, I'm guessing this is the beginning of when Luke started, uh, his Jedi school, we saw, uh, you know, before, uh, Kylo kind of destroyed it in The Force Awakens, I guess, so I guess this is kind of the beginning of that, but, um, and then you see R2-D2 roll, roll up in, which is kind of cool, um, but, you know, when Mando's saying goodbye to Baby Yoda, uh, uh, Grogu kind of touches his helmet, and then Mando understands, he takes off his helmet in front of everybody, and, you know, lets Grogu see his face, and, you know, Grogu touches, and it's a very sweet moment, and also the music for this episode is just so good, especially the last two episodes, like, holy crap, the music's been so good, but, um, you know, that was just a very sweet moment, and, you know, they have to say their goodbye, and acting on Pedro Pascal's face was just phenomenal, you can see the tears in his eyes and whatnot when, uh, you know, Luke's walking away with Grogu, but he knows it's the best for the kid or whatnot, but, uh, it's just so good, and, you know, I guess, you know, now the, you know, season two ends with, you know, him going off the train, and then, Mando's the rightful ruler of Mandalore, I guess, uh, kind of cool, the only thing I do kind of wish is, I wish, uh, Carl Weathers' character was with them this entire episode, you know, to help them, but, yeah, I can kind of see why he's not, you know, home back, uh, home, or, you know, rule, you know, kind of watching over the town back in Nirviru or whatnot, but, and also the other thing is Luke's face did look a little weird, because I'm pretty sure they overlaid a face mask of, you know, young Mark Hamill over the actor or whatnot, but, um, they should have just used Sebastian Stan, which is kind of interesting why, you know, that's kind of why they didn't really say anything about that whenever fans started, uh, requesting Sebastian Stan to be Luke, because they were like, oh, it's kind of too late for that, but whatever, and also I don't even think this leaked like Ahsoka or anything, so that was kind of cool, but, uh, yeah, so that's the end of that story, and then you get a post credit scene, which is, uh, confirming the Boba Fett show, which is called The Book of Boba Fett, which, uh, you know, this post credit scene, it has the, I forgot the guy, uh, you know, the guy with, like, the really long curl of, uh, hair me, I don't know, from, uh, you know, Return of the Jedi, that's kind of Jabba's second-hand man, he's now the ruler of, uh, Jabba Hutt's palace, and, He's getting, like, all fat and whatnot. It's really funny, but uh, you see Boba and Finnick just come through and tear through, and Boba sits on the throne in Jabba's palace, and, uh, you know, and you get the, and, you know, Finnick right by his side, and you get the title card, you know, the Book of Boba Fett, which is coming in December 2021, so that means no Mando Season 3 um, next year, which is kind of unfortunate, um, but I guess it is kind of, um, you know, a Mandalorian show, but... You know what, honestly, I'm because I know they're still trying to uh, work out some of that behind the scenes stuff with Pedro Pascal and whatnot. Because you know, he walked off set during season two. Um, but I do kind of find it interesting that you know they are just going again, you know, do Boba Fett uh, show next year instead of Mando season three. Who knows, they could still surprise us with Mando season three, but I doubt it. Um, could come early uh, 2022 if I was to guess, but um. And honestly, though, I, I'm kind of okay with that because, you know, this episode kind of leaves, you know, because uh, by the time, you know, season three does come back, you know, Grogu could be finished training uh, and, you know, actually come back with Mando or whatnot, which would be kind of interesting. Um, so, like I said, I'm actually okay with that, but i um, really interested to see, uh, you know, how all this works out. But um, overall, though, this finale was awesome. Like, I would even say it's a little bit better than last season's finale, which was just really, really good. Um... The only thing I was kind of, the only thing I was kind of, you know, down on this season is I kind of wanted to see the armor again, um, but, you know, kind of like whatever, but uh, I probably give this episode like a 9.8 out of 10, like, it was just so awesome seeing Luke Skywalker, you know, show up and whatnot, like, oh, I loved it so much, and, you know, the emotional goodbye between Mando and uh, Grogu was just awesome, but uh, and action's really great as well, and also Moff Gideon, he's just such a good film, like, holy crap, he, that, you know, that uh, actor just is so great, like, he's great in this show as a villain and in The Boys as a... Uh, 
I forgot his name, but he's just so good. But like I said, 9.8 out of 10. But anyway, guys, let me know what you guys thought about uh, the Season 2 finale, Episode 8, The Rescue, uh, down below. Uh, check out my Twitter and Discord link in the description. Like and subscribe for more. Check out some of their videos, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!